The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 4788 in the name of Linda Fabiani on Schoonstone. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in this debate please press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. And I call on Linda Fabiani to open the debate. Ms Fabiani, you have seven minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and to everyone who signed the, mo the motion and everyone who is here today. It was at the end of August this year that Reverend Neil Gobrace, parish minister in Cathcart and founder of Glasgow, the Caring City, called me to tell me all about the schoonstone being presented to him by the First Minister and the honour that he felt that he was to be the schoonstone's first keeper prior to the stone being sent around the world on a never-ending journey of kindness. I was intrigued and I was even more intrigued when, along with Neil as first keeper, I went along to Hunter Primary School in East Kilbride and along with all the pupils learned more about the stone and how its sculptor Warren MacLeod from Nova Scotia was inspired. Warren lived in the northeast of Scotland for some time and was fascinated by the Neolithic carved stone orbs which have been found there over the years, over 380 of them. And when given the bronze cast of the stone which had been found on the Bran estate just north of Inverness, Warren was hooked. He combined the concept of our 17th century Bran seer with the Neolithic orbs and created the Schoonstone, which is, I understand, currently in Austria. It's a six-sided orb with three carved portals, each representing a view into the past, the present and the future, representing wisdom, the wisdom to learn from the past, understand the present and plan for the future. And I feel that today, November the 11th Armistice Day, uh, when people gave the ultimate sacrifice, is a day when we remember the past, remember those who still serve in the present, and I hope consider a future free of war and conflict. When Warren spoke to Callum MacDonald of Runrig about the possibility of launching the stone at their homecoming concert in Schoon, it was Callum who suggested calling it the Schoon Stone, linking, of course, to the Stone of Destiny, upon which the kings of the Picts and Scotland were crowned. Warren liked this idea. As he says, my stone is a new stone with a new destiny to go on a never-ending journey of kindness from hand to hand, keeper to keeper around the world. Simple, straightforward and inspiring, as so many of the best ideas are. The children at Hunter Primary School were certainly inspired. They loved the story, they loved the stone. Every one of them there that day touched, rubbed or held the stone and pledged to carry out an act of kindness. They made a kindness tree to mark the day that the stone visited their school. They endorsed entirely the ethos of the stone and they were delighted that such a beautiful object, essentially Scottish in form and symbolic values, was heading around the world. And around the world it is currently travelling to Nova Scotia, where the House of Assembly unanimously endorsed Resolution No. 683 in favour, to the United States, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, Czech Republic and Austria. And it's only a little over two months since its launch. The rules of the Schoonstone are simple. Whoever is honoured to be the keeper must do at least one act of kindness. They must keep the stone for no more than seven days. They must encourage friends and strangers to touch the stone and pledge an act of kindness. And they must pass the stone to a person who can be trusted to honour its purpose. I would urge members to log on to the schoonstone.com website to track progress and see the marvellous initiatives that have been carried out by the keepers so far. I don't have time to detail them all today, but I'd like to mention a couple. In Hungary, the keeper, political correspondent Tamás Chali, and the clown doctors took the stone to the Penheim Children's Hospital to spread magic and kindness. It went from there to a Cayley at the Caledonian pub in Budapest, where I'm sure magic and kindness were further spread. Franciscan brother Bogdik Saba, as keeper in Romania, spread the word about the needs of street children. And so far, uh, Brother Kasaba's St. Francis Foundation in Transylvania has adopted and fostered almost 1,500 children. Sadly, that work still has a long way to go. In New York, Barbara Mann, the third keeper, took the stone to the 9-11-2009 gathering, where it was warmly received by the families, friends and colleagues of those who lost their lives eight years ago. Of course, as I said earlier, an inspiration to Warren MacLeod was that wisdom is to learn from the past, understand the present, and plan for the future. And it is the hope that all over the world, 
the Schoonstone and its inherent ethos will further inspire. That is certainly the case here in Scotland, where the Reverend Neil Gabraith is already working on a legacy plan. Many here will know the good work that Glasgow, the caring city, has carried out in the provision of humanitarian assistance and care in over 50 countries around the world, providing care and support wherever there is a need. It is the Reverend Galbraith's view, shared, I am sure, by all in this Parliament, that here, at home, in Scotland, there should be no such thing as child poverty. Scotland's children do, after all, deserve better. There is cross-party support for this Glasgow The Caring City initiative, entitled Cross Out Child Poverty in Scotland. The statement of intent, compiled by Reverend Galbraith and Tom Harris MP, has already, I understand, been signed by the First Minister. Again, the aspirations are simple and straightforward. Amongst them, there are the statements that no society can be truly at ease with itself while significant numbers of children live in poverty. It says that the elimination of child poverty must be a priority for us all because poverty corrodes children's health, their happiness, their safety and their aspirations. It is only through the elimination of child poverty that we can expect the children of Scotland to live their lives to the full and to be able to enjoy the opportunities that the rest of society take for granted. These are just a selection of the statements from the Cathcart Declaration, and I'm sure the MSPs will be further informed about this initiative before too long. I would urge everyone to support it. All too often, presiding officer, initiatives like the Schoonstone, aspirations like spreading kindness can be considered naive, some would say over-idealistic. But if the children of Hunter Primary School in East Kilbride can be inspired and understand the concept of spreading good, then so can adults from all walks of life. If the life of any one person in this world is cheered by the Schoonstone, then it is worthwhile. And if the legacy of the First Keeper is to help eradicate child poverty in Scotland, then we should all embrace the concept of using Scottish symbolism and values to stimulate acts of kindness. I learned earlier today uh, that this week is World Kindness Week, and in fact Friday is World Kindness Day. So thank you again to those who are here for this debate. I, I hope that they will all make the pledge to do a particular act of kindness on Friday, World Kindness Day, and that they will pass the word to those who have unfortunately been unable to be present this evening. Thank you very much.